Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you to you and uh, Ranking Member Scott for holding this, this hearing. And thank you, uh, Secretary Vilsack, for, for being here today, for your department's dedication, and for your very passionate and personal response about the need for these programs. I spent uh, many years working in a legal aid office, and you quickly discover that people don't struggle by choice. Uh, they had unfortunate circumstances, typically lost a job, uh, health care bills they couldn't pay, et cetera. Uh, appreciate your your uh, meaningful answer there, and you know, like other committee members, I've, I've visited a lot of schools uh, and had lunch with many students. I try to avoid sticking my head into the garbage can, but I have looked in the in there. Uh, we have great salad bars out in Oregon in our schools. The school gardens, which which you mentioned, uh, Mr. Secretary, are, are great programs that nutrition education that kids take home with them and and talk to their families about. Um, and I agree with um, Subcommittee Chairman Rakita. I learn a lot from talking to students. I was actually in our state legislature when we got the junk food out of the vending machines in schools, and the most passionate, uh, compelling testimony came from students who talked about how they would be in a nutrition class learning about health and then go out in the hallway and see vending machines full of junk food, and that sent inconsistent messages. The students were very persuasive there. So I'm really hopeful that this committee We'll work together to successfully reauthorize the child nutrition programs and build on the success of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. I appreciate hearing the concerns from, from my colleagues. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about something uh, that doesn't get as much attention, and I'm really pleased to be partnering with our committee colleague from New York, Representative Stefanik, on legislation that will strengthen the child and adult care food program. Uh, I appreciate Representative Stefanik's interest in this program, and I look forward to working together to put CACFP on a stable footing for the millions of children it serves each day, uh, children in preschool and daycare. Uh, the CACFP also provides uh, after-school programs and emergency shelters. So I wanted to begin um, with uh, asking you about the department's process for preparing new meal standards what are the, why are the new meal guidelines important? And then I also want to ask, um, following up on Representative Fudge's issue about streamlining, uh, the USDA is working with some of the sponsors in the CACFP program to simplify their interactions with state agencies and help those sponsors avoid needing to submit similar paperwork for multiple states. So can you talk both about preparing the meal standards and guidelines and then also simplifying the paperwork for uh, multi-state uh, sponsors? Well, there, there are over 178,000 participating locations uh, in the program that you've asked for, and obviously it's important for us to make sure that in all of those locations, to the extent they involve children, that we're sending a consistent message right through the entire process, consistent message with WIC, consistent message with SNAP uh, and SNAP-Ed, consistent message at the school, consistent message with summer feeding. So it's important that we ensure that the messages that we're sending are consistent. So obviously we rely on the experts to give us a sense of what ought to be served uh, to these youngsters and how it re will be consistent with what they're likely to be served in the future at school and summer feeding uh, and, and down the line. Um, you know, it's important, I think, that we recognize that the reimbursement rates are relatively the same. Uh, they don't get the benefit of the six cents increase, but, they, but in, terms of the, uh, in terms of the reimbursement rates, relatively the same. So, uh, you know, I think it's uh, trying to remain consistency. Now, the, the issue of process, uh, we are engaged uh, at USDA, in, as I mentioned earlier, in a process improvement effort. Uh, and if there are ways in which we can reduce uh, duplication of paperwork, I'm all for it. And that's why I think we are pushing community eligibility, why we're pushing direct certification. These are all ways of producing um, better product, greater access, less cost, less administrative hassle, and fewer errors. Uh, Terrific. So and, and before my time runs out, I also want to ask, uh, we want to make sure that the CACFP works well for small providers, and uh, can you talk a little bit about the importance of keeping the small providers connected, especially in rural areas? How can the department work to keep CACFP participation? Working through our state partners, we want to make sure that just because a youngster is raised in a small town doesn't necessarily mean that they should get inadequate service or no service or uh, improper service. Uh, my kids were in a very small daycare facility in a small town, so I'm very sensitive to the needs for kids in rural areas to have access. Terrific. And my time's about to expire. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, gentlelady.